We have fire. To the coal. Hello, welcome back to another episode from Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. I'm Bill. I'm glad you could join me. Please excuse my voice. I'm uh, still recovering from a case of uh, laryngitis, <clears throat> so my voice isn't quite back 100%. Uh, what we have in front of us here is some pieces of deadfall that uh, I harvested about a week ago when I was out and about. And uh, on the deadfall, uh, this is a branch that came down out of an oak tree. And what we have growing on this is uh, a couple different forms of lichen. The uh, most important lichen on here is uh, the uh, hairy looking stuff. This is called Usnea. It's a very, very medicinal, very medicinal lichen. Very highly uh, antimicrobial. It is edible. And uh, in my area, uh, this is about as big as it gets. Uh, the further south you go, the smaller it is. The further north you go, uh, the uh, usnea gets uh, larger, five to six inches uh, in uh, width and diameter. Uh, width and length rather. <clears throat> it's also known as old man's beard. And uh, interestingly enough, lichens are uh, not plants. Lichens are a symbiotic relationship between algae and fungus. They're in the Bromeliaceae fami family, uh, the same family that bromeliads are in. And they, uh, as such, they don't have a root system. They attach to an anchor point uh, of, a, of a tree, generally, and uh, they, don't, uh, they don't sink their roots in or anything. Uh, there, there are no roots. It's simply a footing, it's just an anchor point. Uh, it is not a, a parasite. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, draw anything, any nutrients. Or moisture, etc., from uh, from the uh, the tree that it anchors to, and since they're in the bromeliad family, they actually absorb water through their through their uh, leaves. And you'll also notice there's a different form of lichen here. It has flat flat leaves here. That's called romidia. This is the one that we're going we're gonna to spotlight today. This is a very medicinal. It's been used in traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, since about 1600 years uh, BC. Now we got a little bit of information here uh, in my notes. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and read. And I believe this is, uh, there's many different uh, species of of uh, this form of lichen of Usnea and uh, I believe this is uh, Usnea australis. <clears throat> There's approximately 20,000 lichen that are forager friendly. Of the only of those only two are considered toxic and those two are powdery yellow in color and should be avoided due, the, due to their vulpinic acid content. So any lichens that are yellowish in color, I would, I would, it would be best to avoid those. Uh, Usnea is commonly found on oak trees, conifers, hickory, walnut, apples, and mulberry trees. They're approximately one to two inches uh, in length uh, and uh, diameter, which is approximately what these are. These are about an inch or so. Uh, the further north that you go, in the northern latitudes, it can be up to four to five inches. Uh, all lichen, including usnea, should be soaked in several changes of water. The leaching reduces the acid level and bitterness. 
before consuming usnea, uh, acid level and bitterness before consuming, uh, usnea attaches to a tree by a solitary anchor. To identify this, you want to pull apart the stem and look for a white core, and which I've already done. Uh, but if you pull the uh, you pull the usnea off, one way to, to identify it, you'll see that one single anchor here. You can probably see that one stem. There it is. One stem going down. That's one way to identify it. You have a solitary footing. You can pull that off. They really grip. So we have the one solitary anchor point point there. Now we have a stem. Whoop, get in frame here. Sorry about that. So we have the, the, the large stem here. This is the main the main stem. So to identify, you just pull it. Now you see that? You see how that's elastic? And you'll see how white that is. It's unmistakable. See how it's stretching? If I pull it more, it'll break. But that stem is elastic on the inside. Actually, the rest of the plant's starting to... You can really see how white that is there against my, my thumbnail. And that is the white core. There we go. That's the white core. That is how you identify usnea. If you have the white core in there, that white cordage, just like an elastic cordage. There it is. You can really see it now. Whoop, there we go. And that is usnea. Just take the, the, the largest little piece of stem there and just pull on it gently it'll start to separate and you'll notice it's kind of elastic. That's how you identify usnea. Alright, back to the notes here. <clears throat> uh, usnea is approximately 96% uh, carbohydrates and is very high in vitamin C. Usnea is grayish green and does not change color with the seasons. There is one exception with Usnea rubicund, which is a rust red color. All are edible, and the rust red color is also uh, uh, edible. It has all the same medicinal properties as, uh, as this Usnea that we're looking at now. Uh, that's just a, a variation. That's Usnea rubicon. Uh, this is a Usnea australis. Uh, all are edible and medicinal, whether they're green or red. Usnea makes a great uh, antibacterial poultice for wounds, as well as a pain reliever. Broad spectrum antibiotic against all gram positive uh, bacterium and tuberculosis species of bacterium. Usnea is also antiviral and antifungal. Usnea is Latin for the Arab Arabic word usna, meaning moss. In a primitive application, usnea makes an excellent bait for deer snares, or as a lure. The deer love to eat this stuff. Uh, whenever you harvest this, uh, it's usually best to harvest the, the uh, the stuff off a of deadfall if you can. If you're if you're out harvesting and you, you run across a a tree that has some, don't strip it bare. Uh, lichens are very slow growing. It takes a long time for this stuff to to get any size to it. So unless you're in dire need of the medicine and there's a you know a minimal amount uh, in the location that you found, then by all means, if you, if you need it and it's an emergency take what you need but otherwise if you're just casually foraging you want to stock up your your uh, herbal apothecary just just take what you need never get greedy always be be uh, respectful and uh, responsible while foraging uh, so 
like I said, this is all off deadfall. This is the dead branch that was laying down. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm indoors right now, obviously. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is, uh, here's another piece of a, another piece of it here. And all this I'm going to remove and put it on a, uh, lay it on a cookie sheet and let it dry for about two or three weeks uh, before it, uh, I put it in a, in a jar and add it to my, uh, my uh, herbal apothecary, my storehouse. The uh, what we're going to do is here in a little bit. We're going to go to the tree that I located all of this. That way, uh, uh, we'll uh, move this uh, instructional video outdoors, and uh, we go take a look at the usnea on the tree. And uh, so you can get a better idea what it looks like outside. And lighting will probably be a little bit better too. So give you some close-ups here so I shall return momentarily stay tuned hello welcome back I'm uh, at the location where I found the usnea that we looked at just a few moments ago and you can see that it is growing usually lichens <clears throat> prefer older trees, uh, trees that have dead bark, uh, or even dead trees for that matter, and this is no exception. You can see that the tree that it's growing on, right here, appears, definitely appears to be dead, and uh, here's the usnea growing if I can get up here a little bit closer without killing myself. I'm on the edge of a edge of a ravine here. You can see it all growing on here on the uh, these dead branches. I can't really get any closer. The piece of deadfall <clears throat> well here's another piece of deadfall here. I might as well take this with me since uh I'm here. A little bit of uh, usnea on it that uh, came down. <clears throat> excuse me, off of this. Uh, the wind probably broke it off of this uh, tangle of uh, dead branches here. But there's quite a bit growing in here, actually. Oh, there's some pretty good-sized pieces right here. Let's see if I can zoom in. I can't get any closer. You can see all of it right here. There's actually quite a bit growing in there. There's a good size, good size clump right there on the end of my finger. It's a lot of it. You can see it all through here. There's a bunch of it here. This is Usnea in its uh, natural habitat. So if you're out hunting for it, <clears throat> I mean you can find it on live trees, but uh, if you can find some uh, some older branches or even uh, even some dead wood, uh, your, your your odds of finding it is is a lot greater. So. I was just out hunting around and uh, happened to run across this over here. There's a bunch more uh, dead branches off to the side over there. I'm not sure if there's any growing on it, but uh, there's actually quite a bit in here. I'm not going to grab any more uh, with what I have at home and this little stick right here. That's enough to put in the uh, in my herbal apothecary. And uh, if I ever need any more, I know where to come and get it here. But uh, you know, the general rule with foraging is never get greedy. Just take what you need, and uh, you can always come back and uh, and grab some more at a later date. You know, bushcraft or survivalist has to also be an opportunist. So when you're out, you know, you may just be out doing other things and run across 
some resources and uh, if that's the case it's always good to kind of grab things when you see them you can see more here it's quite a bit growing down in here some big clumps here good size ones down in there and it looks like there is yeah there's a little bit growing over here in this thicket down in here there's some small pieces growing and I'm not even sure that looks like more dead uh, dead branches it appears that every uh, all of the usnea there, there's some more down in the goalie way down inside you can see a clump there all of the usnea here is growing on uh, on dead wood so and there's a lot more of it looks like a tree collapsed back down in there so I'm kind of seeing some clumps down there in the goalie so there's quite a bit oh wow way down in the bottom I see some pretty good sized clumps back down in there, so. Yeah, and even up here in the top. There's some pieces growing up in there. There's some Spanish moss growing over here on the side. I think I'll pause the video and uh, just so nobody confuses Spanish moss with usnea, I can give you a visual of uh, of the two side by side. They actually they don't look anything alike. And uh, so I'll go ahead and pause this, and uh, I'll be right back. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm back. I just walked uh, about 40, 50 yards away and ran into this uh, Spanish moss here. You can see the the huge difference between uh, Usnia and uh, Spanish moss. Spanish moss always grows. It has a, a net-like pattern and uh, <clears throat> it grows a lot longer. Spanish moss can get up to six, seven, eight foot in length. So uh, that's a real easy way to tell the uh, to tell the two. Usnia always has, uh, always looks like hair. Yeah, no, the Spanish moss looks more like a net. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I did uh, making it for you today. And uh, please like, subscribe, and share. It's another uh, video in our wild edible and uh, medicinal botanical series I've been doing here on the, uh, the west coast of the United States. lot of Spanish moss around here. Everybody have a great day or night depending on where you're located and I will see all of you very soon on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, I'm back. Just exploring around a little more out here and uh, I spotted over here on yet another looks like a dead bush. Up here in the top is uh, Spanish moss, but then as I looked, there's more usnea. You can see, uh, you can see it growing. This is Spanish moss, the net, and then the uh, the hair-like fibers here is all usnea. Here's uh, there's usnea. Some more as we go down. It's a little sporadic. Yeah, and there's some more. Usnea will flower and it releases seeds, and the seeds answering the call of gravity <coughs> will fall down and they get they get caught up in the little crevices of the bark and they germinate and uh, and attach to the uh, to the uh, the wood as an anchor point and uh, so they, they tend to proliferate that way but this, this is nice there's a fair amount of usni out here I'm sure if I uh, explored around I would uh, run across quite a bit more 
here's a little bit over here. I'm just looking off to my right. There's Usnia. And this appears to be another dead bush of some sort. Oh wow, here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's a lot of it out here. Here we go. There's Usnia. A lot of it here. Some good dense clumps. Look at this one. This is a nice one here. Another one back, back underneath. You can see all those on here. It's a nice one right here. And there's some big ones over on the other side here. Pretty good size for this area. Definitely have to make a mental note in case I ever need any more. It's all Usnia here. Some good size some big dense clumps. Here's a great one here. And this is definitely dead. Uh, a dead uh, bush. But look at that. That is a nice big thick clump there. Almost as far as I Boy, and the wind's really kicking up out here. And as I explore through here, here's some more over here. I mean, it is all over out here. All Usnia. Mixed in with a little bit of Spanish moss here. This is Spanish moss. Net-like pattern. Intermixed with uh, Usnia. A lot of it out here. Absolutely amazed at how much is growing out here. The more I, the more I look around, uh, the more I spot, just spotted a bunch more over here. Here is, and this is on a branch, a piece of deadfall that came down out of, looks like an oak tree above me. And the stick here is just covered just covered with it. I think I'll take this one stick with me. And this is all I'm going to take. Oh wow, look at this. Here's another piece of deadfall over here. Actually hung up. It's actually hung up here by a fork. Came down from the tree above and It is just covered. I'm gonna leave that. Here's more over here. Some denser pieces. Small pieces. More dead wood. It definitely prefers <clears throat> Definitely prefers the uh, the older or the dead wood, for sure. And here we go over here. Wow, this place has just got a bunch of it growing out here. Yeah, definitely get out and do some foraging, guys. Don't just watch videos or read books on it. You actually have to get out and and get some field time in. There's some small younger pieces. Remember the it's all Usni on here. Lichens are very slow growing, so you don't want to strip an area. Leave the uh, leave most of it intact so it can uh, continue to proliferate. This this is just covered here. This is just covered. It's a great little, uh, look at that little, that little dense clump right there, the center of the frame. It's really dense. Some more over here. That's yeah, a great little piece. Alright guys, 
Everybody have a great day, and uh, I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.